When you create an ASP.NET Core Web API project using the default template from Visual Studio, Visual Studio will create some default files, folders and configurations. Let us go to Visual Studio and see which are the default files in an ASP.NET Core Web API project. When you open Visual Studio in an empty project, you will find the solution and the project. Now this is the project, the Web API project that we created on the previous part and inside the solution you can have multiple projects. Now let us have a look at the MyBooks ASP.NET Core Web API project. The first item that you see in here are the connected services. Now the connected services is a menu item which is used to configure ASP.NET Core Web API project to external services. So if I right click in here for example and go to add connected services, in here you'll see three options. The first option is the service dependencies, we have the service references and other services. On the other services we have services like the authentication with Azure Active Directory and the Microsoft WCF web service reference provider. If you want to add a service dependency you can just click the add button when it's empty or when it has some data you can click the plus button on the top right in here. So let us click the add button to see which are the services that we can add a dependency to in our project. So we see we have the Azure storage, we have the Azure key vault, we also have the Azure SQL database and you also have the Azure Cosmos DB. Let us cancel and go to the service references. In here we see that we have two options, the Open API which we can use to consume web services which conform to the Open API specification and also the gRPC. Now let us click cancel and go to the solution explorer. Now in here let us go to the next section which is the dependency section and inside the dependencies we have the analyzers where we have some pre-configured rules for the .NET Core applications like the code styles, the view styles and other analytical definitions. Next we have the framework section and inside here you can see the microsoft.aspnetcore.app and the netcore.app and inside these packages you can find different libraries like let's say the aspnetcore.authorization, .course, you also have .http, .mvc etc. And if you go to the other one, the netcore.app, you have the system, data, drawing, IO, etc. And on the last section, which is the packages section, you can find all the NuGet packages that you can install from the NuGet package manager. Now, the difference between the framework section and the packages section is that the libraries that you find inside the frameworks are libraries that come by default from Microsoft but the ones that you find inside the packages are the ones that are custom libraries that you can install from the NuGet package manager. Then next we have the properties section and inside the properties folder you have the launch settings.json file. Inside this file you can define different profiles that Visual Studio will use to run your project. So for example in here we currently have two profiles, the IS Express and the MyBooks and if you go here in the middle top of Visual Studio you'll see that we have the IS Express selected by default but if you want to change the profile you can select the MyBooks profile and inside here you can create as many profiles as you want. Next in here you have the controllers folder and inside this folder you have the default controller named the weather forecast controller and we are going to also use this folder to put our custom controllers. Now if you open the weather forecast controller you see that it inherits from the controller base class, if you scroll down you can see the constructor, the iLogger has already been injected to this constructor and you have a single API endpoint named get of type HTTP get. The app settings.json file 
is an application configuration file used to store configuration settings such as database connections, API keys, etc. If you open the ASP.NET Core AppSettings.json file, you'll see that Visual Studio has created some default code. We are going to use the same file on the upcoming part when we want to store the database connection string. Then in here you also have the program.cs file, which is a C -sharp class named program. And the program.cs is the entry point for the .NET Core applications, also the .NET standard. Like any application, the execution of the application starts from the public static void main method. Then inside the main method, you can see that the create host builder method is being called. And inside this method, in line 23, you can see that this method is setting the startup class to be the first class that gets called or used when the application starts. And the startup class configures services and the application's request pipeline. The last file in here is the weather forecast, and this is just a default C -sharp class used as a model by the weather forecast controller. On the upcoming parts, we are going to create a separate folder, which we are going to use to put all the C -sharp classes that we are going to use to interact with our database data.